Okay. Wow. I mean, we've made a lot of progress. Oh, oh, yeah. there's an event. There's an event. Les Cox. Coco Rico again. Hmm. What a view. You can see the July Cox. Oh, could you uh, repeat that? You, you, uh. Oh. Sorry. Cut out. Yeah. I was must have been looking the wrong way. What a view. You can see the July color clearly from up here. Ah, Cocorico, you're already here. You have news about the croc monsieur? Or is this about the other matter? Here you go. As requested, a full register of those who entered Paris Law School and the full list of graduates. Very good. Let's take a look. Now, could you please tell me what this is about, Inspector? What exactly are you looking for? Hmm. Look at this list of graduates. Do you see any names you recognize? Well, I see my own. Class of 1837, and I see that moronic prosecutor, Rupert Robington, under the class of 46. Oh, and there's J.J. Falcon's name under class of 1832. Very good. Now, take a look at this register page from 1829. See anything amiss? Hmm. Well, I don't see J.J.'s name, but I'm not quite sure what that implies, Inspector. The explanation is simple. J.J. Falcon changed his name sometime between 1829 and 1832, right around the time of the July Revolution. And why would he do that? Why, indeed. Monsieur Cocorico, you and I are roosters. We are birds of justice, birds of French national pride. But Falcon, he is a bird of prey. It is in his very nature to draw his talons and lash out at those around him. I have no doubt that when the pressure rises, he will show his true colors. I'm not sure if I agree with you with your personality assessment, Inspector. I've always suspected that JJ was a buffoon, an imbecile, and troglodyte. But never would I describe him as a person of malice. Oh, hang on, I gotta ban somebody. Okay. Much obliged. I'm trying. Okay, hang on, just a sec. Ah, yes. Banned. We do not permit this nonsense. Thank You're... you. Freaking subjected to the shadow realm. <laughs> hmm. Time okay. will tell. Do, do you need me for anything else, Inspector, or shall I continue my investigation into the croque monsieur? There is one more thing. Take this. The pistol? No, thank you, Inspector. These are dangerous times. If you face a violent threat, you cannot hope to defend yourself with that riding crop of yours. I'm well aware. I just find that these ghastly things tend to escalate situations rather than mitigate them. Hm. That's what everyone says during peacetime. Take it. Thank me when it saves your hide. Fine, fine. I'll keep hold of it. Well, Monsieur Cucurico, you have been most helpful. I'm just doing my duty. Good day, Inspector. Okay. So, that was interesting. Yeah, we just learned a little bit more about JJ. Indeed. Um, so, I, I want to... I don't know if we necessarily need to follow up on the... Uh, the lead with the croque monsieur just because uh we we've already got the our our buddy uh uh, what was uh yeah i'd like to get the information from uh 
miserable bits. Um, well, we, I think, uh, I think that's one more day. Yeah. Or two more days or something like that. So let's see, where can we follow, where can we try to follow up on, uh, the, the rebels? Um. What was La Sopa, Sopa I can't say that word. Oh, it's the hospital. Oh, yeah, we should go pay to the bill. And then that might be a decent place to look for rebels, the Louvre. Well, we'll look go what? the Louvre. It might be a good place to go look for the rebels. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's just pay the bill and get it out of the way, though, because we want to see what Faze has to say tomorrow anyway. Sure. There he is, Spellson. Go ahead. Say what you need to say. Um, excuse me, Dr. Felray. I just wanted to thank you for, you know, giving me an antidote and, um, making me well and stuff. Oh, no trouble at all. Sparrowson, wasn't it? Of course, there is a small matter of the debt. R right. Let's see. One hospital bed, one dose of specialized antidote, expert medical care from attending physicians. The total comes to 500 francs. Holy shit. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Falcon, can I get an advance on this month's pay? And next month's? And maybe the month's of the... Calm down, Spallson. I'm sure the doctor's a reasonable man. He will surely allow you to pay in installments. Oh, of course, of course. Oh, thank goodness. With my current wages, I should be able to fully pay off the debt by the 20th century. Hey, your pay isn't that bad. Now, now, there's no need for quibbling. I have a suggestion. You must as a lawyers, yes? If you do some pro bono work for me, I may be able to knock that da bill down a bit. Maybe to say 100 francs. Oh, that sounds much more manageable. What kind of legal work do you have in mind? A debt collection. Mm hmm. Sounds, Sounds fun, fun to me. <laughs> yeah. That actually sounds quite fun. It would be a nice change from this croquet monsieur nonsense. Yes, give us the details, Doctor. Oh, sorry. Oh, that was you. No, I know. I made the wrong accent. Oh, that's okay. fine. There is a man that I treated for a small injury a couple of years ago. He's been evading my attempts at collecting on his bill ever since. I wouldn't normally pursue medical bills so aggressively, but I know this man is a successful inventor. He can easily afford to front the bill. I would greatly appreciate it if you'd pay him a visit and strong arm him into loosening his purse strings. Well, I'm not making any promises, but mm -hmm. maybe we could swing by the inventor's house if we have a free minute. Thanks, Barrels. Uh, thanks, Falcon. And thank you, Doctor. We will dedicate every waking moment to collecting this debt. Wait, I didn't agree to that. Every waking Moment. Oh my. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Well, that's fun. Right? I mean, a hundred is a lot better than five hundred. Um, yeah. Let's see. Here lies the worship. Our... Uh, yeah. If we go talk to Volpez, we at least know who the Monsieur is. And then we can go collect the debt. 
Okay. We had 13 whole days, so we're doing pretty good. Monsieur Vopez, you've managed to dig up some good information, I trust. Are we too early? Ah. There is good news and there is bad news. Hmm. What do you want first, Lily? Hit me with the good news. Let's hear the good news. I found a way you can meet the Clochet Monsieur. He lurks around the Rue des Marmousets on Friday evenings. The Rue des Marmousets? Oh, the monkey robe by Notre Dame. That seems simple enough. So what's the bad news? The crowd. Monsieur refuses to speak with anyone who does not know a secret password. And I am afraid I was unable to procure that particular password. I see. That is a problem. <coughs> I apologize that I could not be of more help. It is no problem at all, Monsieur. You've given us a fantastic lead. Rue de Marsets on Friday. I'll be there. And this password shouldn't be too hard to uncover. We have to find someone with a loose enough tongue. I shan't delay you to any longer. I'm sure you have a lot of investigative work to do. Is that we do? Thanks for all the help, Monsieur Vopez. So that means that we have what day is it? It is now. No, it's Sunday now. Sunday. Okay. So we do, in fact, need to go to Notre Dame to get the password from the friar. But that's fine. Yeah, so that just, would be easy. Yeah. Let's just get that um, out of the way. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. We'll get the password, it'll be all done and out of the way, and then we can go break some kneecaps. Yeah. Falcon and Sparrowson step into the grand atrium of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Scaffolding lines, such as the crumbling outer walls. Oh, hang on. Scaffolding lines, much of the crumbling outer walls. Unperturbed, a handful of devotees are kneeling in. Yeah, for a little prayer, we felt gone. I had no idea you were a religious type. Don't be silly. I'm following up on Fontaine's lead. We must find our mystery fire. Do you think it's the hunched over fellow over there? I bet it's him. He looks super suspicious. It could be. Let's show some tact. <gasps> Excuse uh... me, Monsieur Ferrier! Do you know what tact is, spell song? Is that a fucking wolf? Yeah, it's Remus. Oh, uh, Remus. Okay. Uh, do you want I'll, me to do? I'll do, I'll do this one. Do you want to do it? Okay. I'll do this one. Uh, it was probably. I am assuming it was Remus that threw us into the river. Um. Mm. <clears throat> Welcome, my brothers. Welcome. All are welcome under the roof of the house of God. Are you here to confess your sins? Or perhaps you wish to join in our services? Actually, Fire, we're here because... Falcon. The Fire, he looks eerily familiar. I mean, he looks just like he does, ridiculous. but that might be a little racist. Yeah, that's fair. That's pretty racist. Just saying. I don't see it. What? Am I going mad? How can you seriously not see it? Your friend appears to be upset. Don't mind him. He's just in a huff because you he thinks you look like this judge we once met. Judge Romulus? 
I get that all the time. I'm his twin brother, you see. Oh, good. I'm not going mad. Flyer, would you say that you had a good relationship with Romulus? We were close. But as you may have heard, he got in trouble with the law recently. I haven't seen him in weeks. I see. I didn't mean to pry. It's no trouble. But tell me, why are you here, my brothers? All right. Well, we have a couple of questions. Um, I do want to do this, but let's do this one first. Yeah. What's with all this gabaldine? Is some sort of construction work going on? That's right. A little repair, a little renovation. It's no secret that the cathedral has seen better days. The cult of reason did a lot of damage back in the days of the revolution. But now we're well on our way to restoring this holy place to its former glory. The cult of reason? The religion of Christianity? A Falcon, what's the difference between a religion and a cult? Don't be rude, Spellson. Ah, don't worry, my brother. I, s I understand how it is. To a young person, all ideologies look like gobbledygook in different packaging, don't they? Mm, pretty much. Then, uh, then maybe you'll come to learn the differences as you grow up. I promise, some ideologies are worth following to the very end. But let's not talk about any more cults and ideologies. Did you want something else? Flyer, we have something that we would like to show you. Could you take a look at this? We heard that you could give uh, special passes readings. Ah, I see. You have your own copy of the, the Book of Judges. I think you will find chapter 15, verse 2, or verse 11, to be particularly enlightening. Let's see. Chapter 15, verse 11. This chapter follows the journey of Samson, the heroic judge with divine strength. In this part of the scripture, Samson is confronted by the men who, ang who are angered by Samson's notion of justice. Could you please read the passage? Okay. Three thousand men of Judah were sent to the top of the rock at Tam. They said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And Samson said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. A beautiful sentence, wouldn't you agree? It's poetic, a beautiful summation of justice. You understand the passage. That's delightful to hear. Yes, Samson was a great judge. Not a judge of today, who sits on a high chair and files endless paperwork, but an old judge, a holy judge, a shafet. Shafet's were to be admired and feared. They made their own judgments and dispensed their own punishments. I'm starting to ramble, aren't I? Okay, let's get back to the point. The key word of the day is Etam. That's the name of the cave where Samson hid. The Rock of Etam. Etam. Got it. I'll make a note. It's like a backwards mate. 
But I'm confused. What do we do with this keyword? That is for you to learn on your own, my brothers. <coughs> oh, there it is. Sorry. Goes. Nope. My saliva went down the wrong tube. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Their voices are hard to do. Yeah. You appear to be intelligent. I am sure that if you put your faith in the right people, you can uncover the truth. We'll see what we can do. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Perhaps you wish to make a confession? No, that's all. <laughs> I think we're done here. Thank you for your time, Friar. Go in peace, my brothers. And that's where we're going to end it for today. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, we will see you again on Monday, where we will go after uh, some debt collection, I think. <laughs> yes, we're going to go smash some kneecaps. Good night. Good night.